You're listening to the City of London Sinfonia Views from the Pit podcast. In part two, we'll bring you more stories from the orchestra pit by some of our musicians. Insight into Opera Holland Park's 2017 season with Sean Edwards, the conductor of Katya Kabanova, and Alex Regan, City of London Sinfonia's performances manager and librarian, and the all-important Tea Break Talk with Charlotte Reed and Matt McGuire. ready for Katja Kabanova, the second performance, and I'm sitting here with Sean Edwards, the conductor, who's making her debut in Opera Holland Park season this year. Yes, this is my first experience of Opera Holland Park. Fantastic, and how are you enjoying it so far? Well, it's a wonderful company because it's very much like being in a big family. So we've had a lot of wonderful rehearsals in small studios at Pimlico, and then meeting the orchestra later on in the process has been a joy, of course, and putting it all together. It's always a bit hair-raising at the last minute. Yes, um, But uh, I think everyone's really wanted to make it work and make it fly, and it's been a fantastic experience. And of course, the rehearsal process, you start off with the orchestra and then you bring the cast onto the stage with the orchestra and then dress rehearsal and the performance. Is that correct? That is correct, except that before I meet the orchestra, I've had about four weeks of rehearsal with the singers, actually, who practice and develop the ideas of the staging. Um, and also we do lots of music calls and in this opera we've spent enormous amount of trouble trying to get the check right um, and the singers are very good at it I think um, but so there's a lot of preparation before the orchestra actually come into it but then once the orchestra are with us it does feel like it lifts everything. Katja Kabanova was one of Janacek's later operas. He had this sort of golden period in the last 10 years of his life. And he wrote his operas in his native language of Czech. He was very much a nationalist, desperate for the Czech Republic to break free from the Austro-Hungarian domination it had been under for many, many years. Um, And also the fact that German had been, therefore, the language of the upper classes and the language of art. Um, Of course, that's not completely true. Vorjak wrote music, Smetna also in Czech, but for Janoček it was very important, I think, to write in Czech and to use the Czech language rhythms, um, not only for the singers, but also for the orchestral fragments. So it's... um, very integral to the way the piece is constructed. And we're about to embark on the second performance of Katja, Um, and now it's had a very good review of the first night. Um, The stage called Janacek's score, his most richly coloured and disturbingly flavoured score. Is that correct? I think that's a wonderful way of describing it, Um, because Janacek went right back to source material, if you like. He was really interested to know what does it feel like to be in love and how do you write music that really um, encapsulates that and he actually really manages it I think and at the same time what does it feel like to be in tremendous sort of emotional anguish what does it feel like to eventually give up on life actually and sort of resign yourself to throwing yourself in the river Um, and I think in every stage of the emotional journey of this piece Janacek finds something that's totally true and direct um, in the way that he uses both the orchestra and the sun lines so yes I would say it's it's an absolutely gorgeous score. You mentioned how he uses the orchestra and the soloists as well. Have you have you been able to watch much of the cast on stage? You're obviously facing them as they're performing the music, but um, are you able to have a look at what they're doing on stage as well as concentrating on the orchestra? Um, it's a strange thing when you're conducting an opera because, of course, you've got the two things going on, enormous amounts of detail in the orchestra, um, lots of difficulties actually because the orchestra has very rhythmic writing and I have to make sure as much as I can at least that the stage really stay with the orchestra and that they're not doing something so marvellous with their acting that they forget to sing in time. So in many ways I'm there actually um, trying to sort of pull everybody from the stage and the orchestra levels together into one unified performance. So I have to admit that actually being able to see 
the bigger picture of what's going on on stage often misses me. And what about the audience? Do you get to see anything happening in the audience? I suppose your back's quite turned towards them, but... What's very nice about performing at Opera Holland Park is that the orchestra actually isn't really in a pit. Um, it's in front of the stage and I have this sweet little gate behind me that I have to come in through and then close. Um, so we are of course separated from the audience but uh, we're also very much in touch with the stage and I think that's a wonderful thing. Um, the Vienna State Opera is like that for example and it's great because the players can really listen to the singers and interact with them and I think we all can then feel also because the players can sort of see sort of directly what's happening in the audience and um, how the emotional journey of the piece actually affects the audience as we go through. Yeah it's very interesting to see how differently audiences react to the music and um, I know our players certainly have a few audience stories as they audience watch in the pitch. <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, you mentioned the Op Holland Park atmosphere. How how has it been so far? This is obviously only your, your second night, but you can tell a lot from the first night, I think. Yes, and I think because always in opera houses, the last sequence of events when you start to put together the orchestra and the stage um, and everything go very, very quickly because that's the most expensive part of the rehearsal process, if you like. It always feels a bit seat of the pantish, whether you're in a very expensive opera house or you know, a wonderful place like this where everybody's you know, absolutely trying to make things work, but on pretty much a student shoestring. But I think that uh, that communal effort is one that I really enjoy. Um, there is a, a great feeling, I think, amongst everyone, from the front of house staff to the wigs, the props, the um, people helping the singers on with their costumes, that this is a group effort and we're all in it. I mean, you can tell just being back here, backstage, everyone's just buzzing and waiting to go on stage and just yeah. can't wait to perform. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, you certainly get that feeling when you get yeah. into the auditorium as well. Oh, good. Yes, That's good. Certainly. To know. Yes. Um, how have you enjoyed working with City of London Symphonia? Is this your first time performing with them? Well, years ago I made a record actually of Roxana Panufnik's Beastly Beasts, oh, right. but unfortunately her score was so complicated and so expensive to put on with hundreds of different instruments and so on that I don't know whether it's ever been performed very much since then, sadly. Um, and I've worked with many of the players who were in the ensemble because, of course, um, like many uh, small chamber orchestra outfits, um, you've got wonderful players who actually appear in lots of different orchestras around, in and around yeah, London. So um, I'm thrilled to have worked quite a lot with Gabby Painter, for example, um, and many of the players are familiar. But um, in this configuration, they're a very, very sensitive, very quick group of players um, absolutely no nonsense in terms of really using every minute of rehearsal time to get as far as we can with the music and they're very very sensitive to the singers as well and um, I think you know we're really beginning to feel that we can start to lock in with them now everybody knows the music well enough to be able to interact and, and that's great as the solo playing is gorgeous so you know what can I say it's a huge pleasure to work with the City of London Symphony. Carter Looks like you've got quite a bit of tea to get through. Yeah. Is, uh, is, is that how you survive through the interval? Tea and cake. And biscuits. Cake. Generally biscuits, but then when people get baking, that's where it's at. It's brilliant. Mm. Do, you get, do you get a lot of baking done yeah. during uh, concert season? I would like to say that I do. I, I am pretty shoddy with my baking, so I, I haven't brought any yet. I will try, um, but others have been bringing. We've had a banana bread today. Very yeah, tasty. Very moist. Yeah. Matt's got his girlfriend on the case. Yeah, carrot cake will be coming soon. I, I think yeah. that's passing the buck, but anyway, yeah. well, one day he I'll might do one. But at the moment, I might at least take credit for it, one. you see, so you never know. Yeah. yeah, I'm not sure she'll be happy with that. Well, anyway, it was a good carrot cake there, last year. Yeah, I, I haven't seen one this year, but apparently she's done one, so yeah. thank you so much yeah. for that. Try and do it. Do you think it's going to be a contender in the kind of orchestra bake-off? Well, it's usually the last night where there's yes. usually a table of about eight or nine different oh, wow. cakes. It's a feast. It's great. That's a cake so party. So it is a cake, cake party. party. And you have to sample all of them or else you're not up there, I'm afraid. Yeah. yeah.
It is good. It's well, it is the interval joy actually. It, it is great. You look, look forward to it. Yeah, yeah it's very good. Yeah. Yeah. British classic. Nice pick me oh, up. Yeah. Yeah. You, you guys have a lot of biscuits to get through, I think. Well, well we do. We need the sugar, you see. How yeah, else can you survive? No, there's always a, in sugar. Always a great biscuit selection. <laughs> have you have you been like this in the in the pit throughout rehearsals as well? Not not whilst we're playing, but but dreaming of the breaks and the intervals yeah. of things to be able to then sample what selection has been provided that day. Yeah. So it's good. I'm I'm partial to a ginger nut and a fig roll. I've decided. Yeah, fig okay. roll. I I'm think a- custard cream is my favourite. I think they're very underrated. What about the rich tea? No, rich tea. A a, about bearable when you've got a cup of tea to dunk. Yeah. But other well, than that, I think the bad dippers actually. They do disintegrate a bit, yeah. don't they? Yeah. yeah. No. The bad dippers. Yeah. Bad dippers. <laughs> yeah. What about a decent chocolate digest? Uh, good, yeah. Very good, yeah. Chocolate hobnob bit better, I think. Yeah. A bit sturdier as yeah, well. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Dipping your tea, it doesn't fall apart. I'm a fan of, yeah. um, I don't like dipping my biscuits in the tea because yeah. then you get little bits of biscuit at the bottom. So what I, I do, I, I take a bit of biscuit, and put it in my mouth, and then drink a bit of tea and it goes soggy in your mouth, you see. <laughs> Now yeah. that is technique. There's no Tried and tested. You've got it down. You can yeah. tell you've had practice during these intervals. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, too much practice. Yeah. I know, how's yeah. the uh, how's the performance going today? Other than the cake, yeah. The yeah other performance. than the cake. <laughs> the performance is good. Yeah, yeah. it's good. It's really so brilliant. brilliant. The music's so amazing. amazing it's yeah. really, really beautiful. The singers are great, sounding brilliant. Um, it's a lovely one, and it's not raining. Win win. Yeah. Beautiful touch. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Dress rehearsal was a disaster for that, wasn't it? Yeah. Was it the dress rehearsal? Oh no, yeah. yeah. The one or the before, one before the rehearsal yeah. before that absolutely awful it was so yeah, wet oh, wow. we couldn't really hear any singing over the rain yeah um, we so had a really bad one last night actually the last five minutes of the opera is really quiet there's the Zaza really quiet it was opening night and it just chucked it down and you couldn't hear anything oh, no. and it was oh. like the Actually, yeah. <laughs> I read that on Twitter. Someone wrote about it on Twitter, and right. they said it was really fitting for the end of the opera. Oh, oh fitting! Well, that's good. Oh, well, that's good, yeah. then, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah, well, they were too busy concentrating to know <laughs> whether it was fitting or not. It was a big viola <laughs> tune, anyway. That's all I remember, and you couldn't oh. hear it. So, did oh. they drown you? Drown yeah, you out? Literally, yeah, oh, I got no. drowned out. Oh, poor viola yeah. section. Your shining no. moment. They don't have the best luck, do they? No. You've got a good part in this We've opera, got a great though. Part, actually, yeah. I have to say. Yeah, it's really good. It's really good to play. It's a lot of tunes, actually. I know. Yeah. That's not. Yeah. Do you think it's your favourite one so far? Probably in a lot of ways. Yeah, it is. It's a bit it's different. It's just really isn't different. It? Yeah. yeah. It's quite yeah. nice to do something like this. Yeah. Just it yeah. is different and it is really beautiful. Yeah. So nice. Tricky, but it's a real challenge and yeah, something to get your teeth okay. into. So we're here in the interval of Zaza and I'm here with Mark Payne and Steve Wick. Mark plays the horn and Steve plays the tuba. How are you finding it so far, gents? Are you liking this opera? Yeah, it's great. It's yeah, great to do something a little bit unfamiliar as yeah, well. Yeah, it's, it's not been performed very often at all, has it? No, it's, no, it's completely unfamiliar yeah. to had you heard to it? Us, yeah. Had you heard it before you'd done no, it this never, time? No, never. No. It's yeah. great fun because it's got loads of dance music in it and it's a bit lighter than Katia Cabanova, which mm. we're doing at the same time. Yeah. yeah. A bit lighter, but also got some juicy Italian verismo in it as well. And the, the setting's very nice. I like these uh, backstage operas where you see the the, uh, the stage from what happens behind it, exactly, you know, yeah. like giving the secrets away. and uh, With the offstage bander and yeah, stage chorus. Yeah. yeah. It's quite uh, a little bit like uh, Adriana Le Couvre we did uh, you know, two or three years right. back. Yeah. yeah. And how are you finding the season so far? What are you enjoying about it most? I just enjoy the contrast of the operas that we do. It started off with La Rondine, then 11 performances of Don Giovanni, mm. and then a week off in the middle. <laughs> and now we start on these two, which are completely different from the other two and completely different from each other. It's hard to pick a favourite, isn't it, Steve? Cause it is, yeah. Because all of yeah. them are very special yeah. here. Yeah, um, yeah. I know there's not tuber in all of them, but yeah. but they're, they're very special to do. Yeah, yeah, so always, you know, fantastic solos, great chorus, you know, good conductors. And uh, I mean, like you, Mark, I've been doing Opera Holland Park for, you know, from the off, I think, you yeah. know, from the very first one we About did, which was... 14 years or something, something isn't like it? Yeah. That, isn't it? Has, it, just, has, it, has yeah. it changed much since you first did oh, it? Oh, very much. I mean, it's, it's improved. I mean, they're using a bigger orchestra, the pit is bigger, yeah. 
uh, the chorus is bigger, so it, you know, it, it really gets better and better every year. Yeah. It's slicker and more mature, I think. We've done a couple of revivals. We've done Lakme twice, we're doing Kakati Kabanova for the second time, a revival production. And while they were fantastic the first time around, there's sort of an added depth this time. There's, there's just something more professional. No, professional's the wrong word, that sounds a bit dry and boring, doesn't it? There's more artistic maturity to the company now, definitely. There's a, there are greater depths to the company. Ooh, quite a serious conversation, but <laughs> <laughs> you wanted this to be live <laughs> podcast. <laughs> great. <laughs> and, so, yeah, and I was just going to say, and people come back to. Um, do, do, yeah, do, do, I mean, uh, I, I know someone who's. Oh, I must come and see Katja again. It was so good last time. Yeah. And haven't the audience figures been terrific? The, the oh. audience numbers that we see from where we sit, it looks pretty much full every night. Yeah, I, I've. I've I think I saw one empty seat for one performance. It's been absolutely sold out all the way through. Other opera companies give their eye teeth to those sorts of audience percentages. Yes. Do you do any audience watching during the show? Of course you, not. Do you know, Always concentrating on a no, Have you noticed, <laughs> noticed anything <laughs> amusing? Or? Oh, we see the odd dig in the ribs from t- two asleep husbands when some sexy <laughs> soprano starts singing and they're taking her clothes off. <laughs> certain second horn players. <laughs> uh, is there anything you're finding challenging about the season? Oh, the quality of the biscuits that Alex provides. <laughs> that, that is a sore, sore <laughs>
Absolutely. Yeah. And how many biscuits and cups of tea do you reckon people have got through well, bef- the rehearsal process? Before the season started, we did a huge bulk order, so I've got a box about the size of a house full of biscuits. For those of our listeners who have been on our Instagram account, we've got a nice picture of all of the biscuits that were ordered into the office and yes. that none of us could eat because they're all for the musicians. <laughs> It's got to be at least 100 packs of biscuits so far. And we're um, not and that's at the end. Obviously, we've got cake on top of that that players make and bring in, which is very nice. I haven't very actually nice. made one yet. Can you, other than the biscuits, can, mm. you, uh, can you tell me any good anecdotes or memorable moments from the rehearsals or any of the performances? Well, I think one of my favourite moments is actually uh, interviewing players for these podcasts. There's been some quite amusing <laughs> answers. <laughs> Um, so a funny moment um, when the rehearsals they have a pre-recorded voice which is Trevor McDonald and he makes the announcements for the audience um, so when we got to the first show he made the announcement and the technical team hadn't quite grasped how it worked so they started it late and about 10 minutes into the performance starting Trevor McDonald's voice came in really loud during the opera and uh, just started announcing that the performance would start in 10 minutes <laughs> Um, yeah, so there's, there's been quite a few funny things with announcements. There's some loud thunder in Zaza, I think. I don't know, was it Catcher? One of the two. And the thunder played and it was all great. It was really loud. And uh, the laptop that it came from, the sound was left on. So about five minutes later, we were getting email pings through the speakers during the show. Oh, no. And that matched with... Of course, we had, we've had we had a lot of rain, especially in the first half of the season, but it was quite a cool moment a few nights ago when it rained in a real sort of pivotal moment of Zaza, and it actually, I think, improved the performance in a way. It was quite atmospheric. Have you been able to watch any of the performances? Um, I've managed to watch the dress rehearsals when I'm not out the back making tea and biscuits. <laughs> it's quite a stressful period, um, the rehearsals, because it's you've got to fit a lot into a short amount of time. But I think the orchestra love hearing it for the first time with the singers and vice versa. The singers love hearing it with the orchestra because they've had rehearsals for two months with just the piano. So when the orchestra get there, it comes to life. So I think they really love having CLS getting there and playing it as it should be. You've been listening to part two of the City of London Sinfonia Views from the Pit podcast, featuring CLS musicians Stephen Wick, Mark Payne, Charlotte Reed, and Matt McGuire, Sean Edwards and Alex Regan in conversation with Natasha Allery, and footage from Katya Kabanova and Zaza rehearsals at Opera Holland Park. This podcast has been produced and edited by Natasha Allery and presented by Natasha Allery, Zach Holstrom, and Alex Regan, part of the City of London Sinfonia executive team.